There's a pretty shocking study released in 2024 that indicates that women and potentially even men may actually receive better care with female physicians compared to male physicians. Now, this is important when we're looking at mortality and readmission rates. This episode is going to dive into this important study from the perspective of women's health and when to know if we should potentially be looking for a second opinion or potentially even getting a new doctor. Now, as with any field, there's going to be a range of competency and professionalism across the industry. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to something like practicing medicine and the realm of being a physician, there's a lot on the line, right? So it's something we need to take very seriously. And this study is an important piece of evidence in terms of making decisions when it comes to our own care, and especially for women in their health and fitness journey and in terms of improving their overall quality of life and potentially longevity as well. So with that said, let's dive in. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. If you're listening on audio, make sure you share the show if you find this entertaining, if it changes your perspective, if you find value in it, or maybe you learn something new, for example, exposure to this study that you might have not known existed. So let's start with first and foremost, in April 2024, there was a study that looked at hospital uh, mortality as well as readmission rates. And what they found was around 450,000 female patients and 280,000 male patients. Out of those numbers, around 31% of the females and 30% of the males were treated by female doctors. Both the male and female patients actually had lower mortality when being treated by female doctors. However, the benefit was even greater for the female patients, meaning while this was kind of a trend across the board, the most significant difference was in women being treated by women. Now, there were also better outcomes for the men as well when being treated by women, and we'll kind of explore that and talk about that a little bit later in the episode. There's also a 2017 study looking at the exact same outcomes and it showed the exact same results in terms of those mortality rates and readmission rates, meaning when people are going back into the hospital uh, for similar concerns or a related condition. Now, something else we wanna look at here is also the amount of time that a physician is potentially spending with a patient. So in another study examining how much time primary care physicians are spending with their patients, what's interesting here, right, is this more of a primary care setting, preventive health, um, just kind of evaluation and screening and basic health measures, this is gonna be different than a hospital setting where maybe people have uh, more serious matters going on when it comes to their health. But we see similar patterns and trends. In fact, they found that the female doctors also on average spend about 16% more time or around three minutes longer per patient. Now, obviously within the confines of Western medicine, it's not necessarily ideal in terms of getting the time and attention that people need. It's why there's been a large push for preventive medicine, health optimization, functional medicine, a lot of these sort of rising areas within the industry of healthcare. And that's because people want more time and attention to discuss important matters related to their health. So this doesn't sound like much, right? Three minutes may not seem like anything crazy or 16% more time, but when you think about it over the course of 15 to 20 patients per day, that can actually make a significant difference, not only in terms of the person's health, but uh, the overall practice volume and the people that they're seeing over the totality of a day, a week, a month, and a year. So even just improved experience with bedside manner is something to consider here when we have more time. Even three to five minutes in a conversation could potentially improve the depth of relationship and potentially the treatment outcomes. Bit of that is more of a qualitative assessment of some of the possibilities of what could happen when working with your doctor in that way. So talking about bedside manner, there's a number of different studies that indicate that female physicians consistently have better bedside manner than male physicians as well. So Across the board, we're seeing some differences in terms of time spent with patients, hospital readmission, mortality rates, but we also have surgical outcomes that we can look at in terms of data here. And I think that's important anytime someone has a substantial medical procedure. Now, as a guy myself, I'm certainly not uh, hating on male physicians or surgeons. I've certainly had some amazing male physicians over the course of my life, particularly in the surgical realm. So in terms of this, this is mainly based on data from some of these studies, uh, though in personal experience, I've had pleasant experiences or a variety of both positive and negative experiences uh, with 
you know, a variety of physicians, regardless of gender and regardless of their particular uh, area of practice or what they were focused on, right? So there's good surgeons, there's good primary care physicians or people in endocrinology, uh, but sometimes it can be hard to find and it can be few and far between depending on the area of practice you're looking at and uh, where you live in terms of your location in the United States, if you're in more of that Western medicine sphere, and the quality of care can also vary obviously in other countries as well. So in terms of surgical outcomes, let's dive into what the research uh, has to say here. There's two studies examining these surgical outcomes with male and female surgeons. One study looked at gallbladder removal surgeries, which is a fairly uh, common occurrence. And we see that in the Western world. Um, now, what they found was that female surgeons had significantly fewer surgical complications than their male counterparts. They also operated a little bit more slowly and took their time with the patient, which kind of overlaps a bit with what we were seeing in the primary care data in terms of the primary care evidence and the time spent per patient being about three minutes more or 16% more. Now over a course of a surgery, a surgery is much longer than a primary care visit. So when you extend that time horizon, okay, did our attention to detail improve or are we being a bit more cautious here? So it looks as though they operated a bit more slowly, spent a little bit more time with the patients. The other study looked at numerous types of surgeries and saw similar patterns and trends. When men operated on women, there was a higher rate of complications than when it was female surgeons operating on women. And so when we had female to female versus male to female, there was a bit of a difference there. Now you might question, does this have to do with the training or school selected or preferred by women? Does it have to do with some type of innate uh, sort of evolutionary care instincts? You know, what components are driving these differences uh, when it comes to this sort of statistical significance? Is it an ego factor when it comes to physicians and potentially you know, having a level of education? How long have they been practicing? How recently did they graduate medical school? What type of residency and surgical training did they have? There's really a multitude of variables to consider here aside from just gender and whether this was a surgical or primary care setting. However, uh, the data at this point in time seems to support that women may actually receive slightly better care um, when working with a female physician. So if you're a woman and you have a male physician, should you drop that person immediately? Not necessarily. There are certainly amazing male physicians out there. I know a handful of them and have even mentored with some where you know maybe you're having a fantastic experience or they really tend to give you that time and attention that you feel you deserve when it comes to your health or maybe they're particularly savvy or strong in a particular practice area. And so for that reason, you choose to stay with them. Now this could be a wide range of professions, right? Maybe for your uh, OBGYN appointments, Maybe you prefer a female physician, but maybe you happen to see a male ENT or orthopedist, right? Or potentially you have someone that you work with in a different capacity of medicine, right? We have our primary care, you may have dental care, you may have surgery. There's a number of things that people will need over the course of their lifetime. So it's not to say that you can't have a variety of care professionals in your life and that they have different backgrounds and you know you have diversity from that perspective as well. So if you're looking for a new doctor, you can always start by looking at various physician review websites, and particularly if you're going in for a surgery. I think the most important thing when it comes to surgery is the level of experience. So basing that uh, more on kind of a meritocracy aspect of it and seeing the volume of procedures and reviews that people may have. So for example, some surgeons do the same surgery 10 to 20 times per day on days when they're in surgery. Now, sometimes they may have a practice outside of surgery. So for example, using the ENT example, people may have an ENT practice where they're doing preventive care and seeing people maybe two days per week and maybe they do surgery one or two days per week or maybe they are in a hospital uh, certain days of the week and then maybe they see patients outside of that or they see patients in the hospital and they operate you know not everyone's operating every single day but you know if you have someone doing 10 to 20 surgeries per day that's going to be different uh, than like the general surgeon for example who's doing a variety of different types versus the very specialized surgeon. And we talk about that even when it comes to things related to health and fitness coaching, when you have specific goals, it can be helpful to have someone who has a lot of experience in a particular area. We talk a lot about gut health here. So having some sort of specialty in digestive health, people with autoimmune concerns, reproductive health, things like PCOS. So while this is 
maybe a true consideration when it comes to physicians and medical practice. It also spans into other health professions as well. If you maybe have a particular injury that you're rehabbing, you know, seeing someone who's maybe amazing with ankles or hips or shoulders, if that's something that you tend to uh, have an issue with based on your sport or you know, recreational activity of choice. So when it comes to this, best thing to do, probably look for some reviews, look for background, education, and maybe even talk to the surgeon that you're consulting with about how often they do the specific procedure uh, that you're looking into. So for example, some people remove a lot of tonsils. Some people uh, happen to do a lot of hernia surgeries, right? Some people have done a lot of, uh, when people have their appendix removed or spleen removed, you know, there's a lot of different surgeries that are happening on a regular basis, but there's definitely a difference between that general surgeon and someone who's more specialized. When it comes to more of that woman's care perspective or women's care perspective, you know, it seems that the data indicates that there is a little bit of that preference and indication that women may receive slightly better care with female physicians. Now, Again, practice area here matters, education matters, uh, experience and skill set matters, but it is something to consider, especially if you're someone who's not receiving the attention, the care, the level of detail that maybe you feel is required to get your best health outcomes. And that's why it's always great to be your own advocate and consider a second opinion in terms of uh, being able to be a steward of your health and making sure that you're getting the support that you need. So as we kind of wrap up today's episode, the data does indicate that female patients may be better treated in multiple regards by female doctors in terms of that duration of appointment, potentially the surgical outcomes, hospital readmission rates, all things worth considering when you are potentially in a situation where you're receiving medical care. That doesn't mean you need to currently drop your male doctor. There are a lot of amazing male physicians out there and there's going to be discrepancies in education and experience regardless of gender, regardless of background. You know, someone could have gone to a particular school but maybe had an amazing residency experience or happens to do the same surgery all the time where now after 10 or 20 years, they have fantastic skills and expertise doing a particular procedure and that is their bread and butter. It would be like someone who does a particular type of training all the time, right? If you've prepared a hundred people to run a half Ironman or to do a half Ironman, then maybe you're a good person to work with if someone has a goal of doing a half Ironman. So specificity does matter here too. In terms of level of experience, always something to consider and looking at your general gut instinct. So how do you feel around this person? Does this person have good side be bedside manner with you? Do they seem supportive of whatever your health goals are or your concerns? That's something we always need to pay attention to when it comes to getting the best possible outcomes. And if something feels fishy or something feels off, it's okay to pause, maybe reevaluate and seek out a second opinion or talk to someone else. That's what that process is for in terms of doing your own screening and seeing what's available. The only downside is sometimes people can be a bit limited based on their geographic area, the hospitals in their vicinity, or what their insurance will cover. So that's another thing that will play into it and a variable that may dictate the outcomes. Hopefully this was informative for you in making decisions about your own health, bringing awareness to some new research. If you are interested, uh, the 2024 journal that I cited was actually from an internal medicine journal, and it's a comparison of hospital mortality and readmission rates by physician and patient sex. So this is based on actual evidence and publications in more of a medical field. There's certainly a number of other studies included here, ranging from uh, things published between 2016 and 2024, and even surgeon patient sex concordance with post-operative outcomes, and that was from JAMA, which is a very prestigious medical journal as well. So lots of evidence to support the overall discussion here that we're having. I'm curious of your thoughts, your comments, your experiences, and if you are a health professional, what you would recommend for your clients or patients if they were in that situation. If you enjoyed the show today, please support it by subscribing to the channel, leaving a rating and review if you're on audio, or giving it a thumbs up or comment on YouTube. This goes a long way to support the work that my team and I do here and the content that we share with you at no cost each and every week. You can also screenshot the show, share it the old fashioned way with a friend, or just copy the URL of wherever you're listening and share it wherever you share stuff. It goes a really long way to support the work that we do. And 
Chances are you wouldn't have even found the show in the first place if not for one of our original listeners supporting the show either within the algorithm or sharing it with you on one of their social channels or maybe texting you an episode. I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show and I'll talk to you in the next one.